วินเทอร์โรสวิทเทนบายพันวดีพงดราเคอิทิเมคินเอพิโซด18 Are you feeling better? Karen asked her daughter with concern if she had not intervened earlier that morning when she had seen Irie so pale and dizzy. Irie would have pushed herself and gone to work. Yes, I feel better for resting. I really cried softly. You have gone thin. I'm afraid that you will be sick again. I read thin, pale appearance, dearly worried Karen. Had she only married Enrique to escape from the thing, she could not accept herself. And when that had not worked, Run far away from her brother. Iris saw her mother's worried face, and read her feelings. It's not as you fear, ma'am. I don't think in that way about Cody anymore. I'm not well because I've been working too hard. I haven't had a chance to rest. I'm a lot better now. I will try to cheer her mother up. Although she herself was concerned and frightened of so many things, especially her own ill health. Whatever happens, you should go and see the doctor. You can't neglect your own health. Okay, I will go tomorrow. Does that make you feel better? Rest here a bit longer. I'm just going round to talk to Aunt Elena for a while. Irene was sitting in her favorite rocking chair in the sitting room when she heard someone ringing the front doorbell. At first, she thought it was a missionary trying to persuade her to change her religion or something of that sort. So she ignored the bell, believing that whoever it was would soon go away. But she was mistaken. The sound of ringing grew louder. And more frequent, indicating the irritable mood of the person on the doorstep. Who on earth can it be, acting so authoritatively? Finally, unable to endure being disturbed like this any more, Irene got up and went to open the door, complaining under her breath. Her shock on seeing who it was rooted her to the spot. Aren't you even going to ask me in? Said the visitor in mock surprise. Come in. I telephoned your office, and heard that you were off sick. What's wrong? Enrique's voice was tinged with tenderness, seeing that, like himself, Irie had gone thinner and paler. All the joy in his life had been extinguished on the day he found out that. Harry had returned to America. He had counted the days to her return, but there was no sign of her. He had tried to make himself stop thinking about her by burying himself in his work until he had become sick, recovering the divorce documents had reached him. He remembered tearing them into little pieces. I'm weak. I cannot work. What business do you have here? See, Enrique thought she doesn't want to speak to me. I shouldn't have wasted my time in coming to appeal to her when things are in this state. Allow, he said. Did you think that I would let you escape so easily? We have both got what we wanted. My duty is over. If you agree to divorce, then everything is concluded. What else do you want? We should be able to speak and understand each other better than this. If you could just stop thinking about everything as a duty, with no personal feelings involved. Before marriage, we made an agreement, didn't we? But. 
I never said that I would allow you to divorce me. Can't you understand that? A man like me, who has been out with many women, but is still single, with almost half of his life behind him, does decide to marry just to help out a friend or to win a victory over a young girl. Surely you can see there must be some deeper meaning. I have come to take you back to Rio. You start again. Build a new understanding between us. Do you understand? He tried to stay calm and explain to Irie, but it was all to no avail. No, I don't understand. I only know that I did what I did for Cody. And if you allow me to divorce you, then you can go back to your lover. I pity Monica. She has waited for you for so long. You know too much. Who told you? His face showed his surprise. Oh, oh, oh. did you think you could hide this? Thought I read. Everyone knows, even Gabriel. Gabriel had been at loss when she had heard that they were to marry. Monica was an old friend. I was a new friend, who she was just getting to know. Tactfully, when she had called to con congratulate Eileen after receiving the wedding invitation, she had not mentioned Monica. She had been afraid that. It would hurt her. Nobody told me. I could see for myself clearly enough. If there was nothing between you, why did she sit crying on our wedding day? Now it was Elliot's turn to be at a loss. How could he explain? Not knowing at what point, Irie had seen Monica crying. And who could tell whether they were tears of happiness or disappointment. He was close to Monica and knowing she cried easily, suspected that there had probably been tears of happiness. But if he were to make any excuses, it would be as if he was trying to cover up his guilty conscience. And he did not want to give that impression he had promised Monica that he would keep her secret, so he did not offer any justification. I can say anything about Monica until the suitable time. What am I saying must be true, otherwise he would fight back. <laughs> and he still has the nerve to say that he wants us to start afresh. He's a liar. I want him out of my sight. Ellie thought inwardly, hiding her disappointment deep in her heart. The matter is over, please leave. Ellie wanted to cut the final thread between them before he had a chance to see any signs of her ever-present vulnerability. Question your own heart carefully, Irene. When you are ready, tell me. I will be waiting for you in Rio. Enrique's face was serious as he spoke. Irene watched his retreating figure as he walked out of the door before sinking back down into the rocking chair and giving way to tears of bitter disappointment. Over the past weeks, she had started to know her own heart. The truth was that she missed him and wanted to see his face every day. He had actually been here and she had sent him back to another woman because she was tender-hearted and sorry for the little boy and his mother. If it were not for that, she would have given away. If it were not for that, she would have given way and gone back with him to Rio. What is wrong, sweetie? Karen said on getting back, full of concern to see her daughter sitting sadly with red, swollen eyes. He was here. But Iris' tears flow again 
even though she had thought she had regained her self-control. Who was here? Enrique, he followed me here. Why don't you go back with him? You are married to him, so you should do your duty as a wife instead of hiding here. I can't go back. I have destroyed someone's happiness. That's enough. What are you talking about? I don't understand. Whose happiness have you destroyed? Sooner or later, Karen would know the truth. Rather than listening that, she would hear the story from another person. I really decided to tell her herself. It is like this. Enrique and I agree that. And I really pour out the whole story to her mother, including having seen Monica weeping on her wedding day. If they loved each other, they would have got married a long time ago. He wouldn't have waited until marrying you and then getting a divorce to get to go back to his old love. I'm sure he has reasons in his heart for choosing you rather than just wanting to help his friend as you think. He knows that you love your brother so much and would not say no to him. Is that right? Karen stared into her daughter's face as she spoke. She was still uncertain whether Irie had completely forgotten the feelings she had once had for her brother and was alarmed by what she had just learned. Don't tell Cody, ma'am. But he ought to be the first to know. Please, think about me too. I don't want Cody to be disappointed. Someday, I will tell him I promise. If that is the way you want it, I will do as you wish. But don't wait too long. Or Cody will hear about all this from someone else. I won't. Oh, Irie, are you sure? It is too late for you to change your mind and go back with Enrique. Ask yourself what you want. Examine your own feelings. Now, go and wash your face and rest. You are thin enough already. Karen ordered, adding to herself, Oh, are you pregnant? Although she would have been delighted to have another grandchild, her heart prayed that this would, this would not be the case, as the time wasn't right. How could Irie become a mother when she still had not confronted her own errors of judgment and even now had not stopped running away from the truth? Tell me what the doctor said. Karen asked Irie anxiously, putting down her knitting and staring at her daughter's pale face as she entered the room. I'm going to have a baby. Before she had even finished speaking, Harry collapsed in heartbreaking sobs in her mother's lap. Karen gently stroked her hair to comfort her. Will he believe is his child? We were together only for a week. Then I ran away to America. Harry had more to tell, but she kept from her mother the fact that they had met love only once. Her mother was unaware of another inescapable truth. Having sent the divorce documents to Enrique, Irene felt that she was no longer his wife. Don't panic and act out of character, my little daughter. You have never acted rashly before. You are lucky that you have been raised with a child. If Enrique suspects that Jack might be the father, I will help you to explain to him that that is not the case. But, but what? I have already divorced him. Iris was choked Karen 
When? Why didn't you tell me? I have already sent the divorce papers for him to sign. The middle-aged woman raised a hand to her chest as if she was going to faint, but quickly regained control to herself. We have to think of the best thing to do. Whatever happens, you are still my daughter. When the baby is born, we should do whatever is best for it, right? Karen hugged Iris' thin body encouragingly. Karen did not know herself how she could find a suitable solution, but she was determined that whatever happened, Riri's history must not be allowed to repeat itself. Iris must keep the child and bring it up as she had taken care of Irene. You are so stubborn. You mean to tell me that even when he came after you here, you still put obstacles in his path? If he marries to, to his old love, what will you do? Is my little niece going to have a father? Having been close friends for so long, Hilary was the only person who dared to blame Ivy so directly. She knew that Ivy was obstinate and believed in herself too much. When she had decided to do something, it was difficult to make her change her mind. However, Hilary's desire to help Irene made her unable to stop. When she had first heard that Irene had married, she had sat hustling for a long time. Whenever they had spoken on the phone, Irene had never said anything about marriage. It was only when she had graduated from university in the UK and come back to live in New Jersey that she had found out the truth. What can I do? I don't have a father, but I grew up just the same. As a problem child, he really stated flatly. It's not the same here. I felt deprived of love because my father and mother abandoned me, rejecting their responsibilities. This experience will help me to be the best mother I can. At least, my baby will never feel as I felt unwanted. It's not natural. A baby should be born to a mother and a father, have the warmth and love that are its birthright, making its life perfect and lacking nothing. You must know, there is no substitute for a father's love. Hugh, you don't know this man. He's not suitable to be anyone's father. He's a brave boy, lacking responsibility. He would be a bad example. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's talk about you and Jake. How was your first date? I really did not want to think anymore about her unborn child. By this time, Enrique would be happy with Monica, Monica's son. Yes, the boy that she had seen him taking care of as if he was his own child. When she had seen him at the Moenda restaurant that day in Rio, how had he been feeling? How would he feel if he knew she was expecting his child? It was natural for him to be happy, but perhaps not very really so because the mother-to-be was not the woman he loves. That woman already has a cute son for him to admire. Who knows, maybe he is satisfied with everything, the way it is. The pain in her heart was caused not by jealousy, but disappointment. She tried to stop thinking and direct her attention away from herself and towards praying Cupid for her close friend. When Jack had first heard that, Ari was pregnant. He had been shocked and incredulous, but finally, as her belly swelled and she could no longer keep it a secret from anyone, Jake had had to accept the truth that she could never belong to anyone else. With unwavering loyalty, Jake could not stop himself from being her friend as before. Sometimes, Ari could see his heart and truly wanted him to be happy. 
So when Hilary had returned from England, she had decided to break keep it. It seemed that her efforts had paid off. Otherwise, Hilary would not be brushing the way she was, taking off her red framed glasses and wiping the lens as she spoke about the man her friend had introduced to her. He is a real gentleman. He has invited me to go on a boat trip around Manhattan, but nothing is fixed yet. What are you waiting for? If you want to go, go. Why do you have to think so much first? If you go out on a date, have dinner, but don't sleep together like other couples, there's nothing wrong. Is you right? Jack understands easily. He doesn't like to go against other people. That's why we were close friends for so long. Without ever sleeping together, her friend was made Hillary more confident. For a long time, she and Irie, whoever she and Irie, whoever body knew were Catholic girls, had been more in love with books than boys. This had made them lack experience of the opposite sex, unlike most young American girls who start going out and dating with boys when they are 12 or 13 years old. Both of them had vowed to wait until marriage. And Enrique, Enrique was probably a Roman Catholic, like most Brazilians. His tastes were probably not so different from those of Irie and herself, especially about having a lot of children. Catholics believe that children are gifts from God. See, Irie had only just married and was pregnant right away. Hilary smiled to herself at her own thoughts. The day after tomorrow, I have to go to Houston. If you're free, why don't you come with me? Are you interested? Hey, what are you laughing? You. I was just thinking. What did you say? I didn't hear. I asked you to go to Houston with me. You have never been there, have you? Okay. I will enjoy myself before coming back and sitting down to work. Mom and Dad can stop complaining then. Dad, I'm wasting money. If I get a job, he will escape the winter and go to Florida. Grandma Lena always trying to persuade them to do like her. Your mother talks to Grandma Lena often. She gave away and decided to buy a holiday home in Florida, right? All people are like that. They want to live in peace and quiet away from the crowds, leaving us young active souls to fight against the cold. But you are lucky that you have a house in Houston. That's perfect place too, suitable for you to go and live in when you retire. The lives of people in the South are not rushed and speedy like ours in the East. And people there are kind too. You don't have to be always assertive fighting your way to get your car on the road or to get on the subway. Have you stopped thinking the place of the South, you? You're not like most students who go to study abroad or people who live in ivory towns who look down on Southerners, criticizing their accents. If I was like that, how could we get along together? Our characters are similar. The big difference is that I'm not as good at strangling my own feelings as you are. He really laughed in amusement as she finished speaking while I will toss her head, irritated by her friend's scolding. She knew full well what he really implying and did not want to anger her.